guys out there and you know Paul, I had a really bad accident and I've had to learn to play again. And the things I've discovered from that has helped me play and teach other people to be more careful in their warm up. In a world where trombone players and musicians want to know the answers to burning questions, top trombone players, even me, are here with Paul the Trombonist Nowell to answer your burning questions. We have Marcus Reynolds here, he's from the UK, he's a really great brass musician and he's going to share with you some cool little gems of wisdom about playing the trombone. So, welcome to the show. Hi everybody, hi Paul. Yeah, so, I would say, what is the number one, like, kind of warm up that you would, you feel that has kind of changed your, your playing the most out of anything that you would love to share with our audience? Okay, well, many of you guys out there, and you know, Paul, I had a really bad accident and I've had to learn to play again. And the things I've discovered from that has helped me play and teach other people to be more careful in their warm up. For example, many times you've had a gig the night before and the, the chops are a bit swollen and many players go straight into quite heavy playing at the beginning. And that's not very clever because the reason you see athletes warming up quite, um, you know, uh, what's the word, assiduously really determined that to, to get ready for the race is to work off the lactic acid of the previous day's exercise. So um, I put three um, trainings of this on, on, on Facebook, but basically what I do, I, I, I go in on the morning really early. If I've got a heavy gig that night and I've been playing the night before, I do, I do this. <laughs> Now, I know it doesn't sound very, very attractive, but what you're doing is you're reminding the brain that that's what we're going to be doing. And because we've got this lactic acid and with my um, scar tissue, I've got permanent lactic acid. So the next the last thing I want is another lot of lactic acid because it's trying to clear things out the way, i.e. the weight of the mouthpiece. Because basically, after you've done a gig, when you're playing the trombone, you're being thumped in the mouth. Mm. Whether it looks as if you are or not, you are. You're being, you're being punched on the mouth. And then what happens is lactic acid comes into the muscles to alleviate that. So in the morning, I literally do about, oh, it's 20 seconds. <laughs> Not very attractive, but then if I stay in the room, I'll play again. Uh -uh. You've got to put the horn down. You've got to leave and make a coffee. And then when you come back, straight away, you can hear a richness. Now, the temptation is because it sounds much more glorious after that 30 second not very nice sound you want to play more and more and some of your players will never have to do what i have to do but i have to stop again i really do have to stop again to allow the blood and oxygen to get into the capillaries to give the muscles the strength to perform and the relaxation for the vibration surfaces of the lips now And they're all sounding nice and relaxed, nice and relaxed. Now, mine's in a three prong thing. I'll do a little bit of practice and something a bit more difficult. Now, that's causing duress, that is. And if I'm not careful, I'll get more lactic acid. I don't want that. So then I have a 20 minute rest. I actually stopped for 20 minutes. It's not an easy regime, but if, if you're 
players out there have done a gig and their chops feel really rubbery and they won't perform, pressure is the killer and it will bring another lot of lactic acid on and the lips will never vibrate and you'll go into damage. You'll go into damage, you'll start playing and you'll compromise and all these compromises will get you through the gig but then they'll ghost up in a next in another performance and that's when real problems start okay so let's slow this down a bit and go step by step step one you do this exercise with what are you doing to your chops when it sounds not like full sounding what is that about just more more floppy <laughs> hardly touching the mouthpiece Okay, and you do that and for my, just a few minutes, right? Yeah, and in my case, I've got this. Yeah, so we'll talk about your invention too. Well, I'll set that so I can hardly reach the lips. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, there's enough duress there for the blood and oxygen to flow but not enough duress, in other words, punch, for lactic acid to appear. Okay. And after you've done that for a few minutes, I can hardly reach the mouthpiece. So after a few minutes of that, I'll remove my chin rest. And I hope your viewers can hear that the notes don't go la la di, they go la la la, because everything is not being crushed. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm sure everyone's wondering what in the world is on your trombone. So you're also an inventor, right? You invented this device. The way you were describing it to me is you dreamt it, right? <laughs> I, I dreamt it. I, I, I needed something. I, I'd learned to play again, Paul and to a reasonable standard, but I wasn't getting that cleanliness. I wasn't getting the accuracy. I wasn't getting the slotting that I wanted. And I dreamt about something that would hover over the scar tissue. Mm. And I can see some of your players smiling. There's nothing hovering about playing a brass instrument. It's on or it's off. And I, I, I come up with this idea that if we could really adjust that weight I know everybody wants to play with less weight and there's lots of um, uh, devices out there to help you do that. But this one, you're totally in charge of your development of bringing these corners forward so your lips can vibrate better because you've taken some of the weight from your top lip and you've shared it with the chin. Yeah. I'm nearly off as well. It's still nearly off. I'm I'm pushing away all the time. But don't let your viewers get um, confused. Even though I'm screwing it towards my chin, I'm easing my chin towards it to have a synergy. Yeah. And that this turns this into a, a, a timpani. And it brings the cheeks forward. And that turns them into a, 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 a resonant oral chamber. Nice. Yeah, I got one too. And because, hey. yeah, because that, that's, you know, how I found out about you. It was this awesome right. invention you got. And uh, basically, I always had an issue with the the ring around my lip because I have sensitive skin. And I put a little bit too much pressure, but it's, it's helped me kind of relax a bit more. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah, I, yeah and I'm just um, doing a series of videos to show how to use it. Um, and uh, a beginner uh, and uh, intermediate and advanced for Stratus. Awesome. Any other uh, kind of exercises that, you know, really helps you out? Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things, um, I wouldn't advise this when your um, trombone players get it first off, but I really, I put this really forward. So I can't reach the mouthpiece at all. But, but by trying to reach the mouthpiece, by striving to reach the mouthpiece, everything falls into place. If you, if you watch, look, 
mm. that, that this all comes forward and this immediately becomes tympanic and, and you're in a really, really good position to bring the air upwards. Nice. I, I sent you some photographs. Yeah. Uh, uh, perhaps you might be able to share them with, mm -hmm. with your... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your how the air, how yeah. the air goes. So, so a lot of people, there's upstream and downstream playing. We know that. But nine times out of ten, when students come to see me or we have Skype sessions, I find that their air is too is too far down. Downstream. And, and I remind them there's no hole in the bottom of the mouthpiece. Ah, hole is in the middle of the mouthpiece so directly you bring that air up so i said to my students i go right let's find where your air is so i said just whistle if you can't whistle just go through the shape and the air is generally just below the fingers and to try and maintain that airflow and the direction the exercise i've come up with is and it's it's worth millions it will save hours and hours and hours and it's two whistles, two blow the candles out, two buzzes like this in one breath so the teeth don't close up. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you add another two buzzes to it and bring the trombone up like a microphone as opposed to a mouthpiece, this could happen. Ah. Poor eight, but, but I'm not. It feels like an F. Interesting. I've never ever heard anything like that before. Like as far as approaching a, an exercise that's really different. I'm I'm honoured because I know I know who your I know who your um uh, mentors have been over the years, Paul. So I'm honoured for you to say that. If you could sum up what. You call your device the Stratus, right? It's an yeah. embouchure training device that trains you how to use your air efficiently and how to uh, train your formation of your mouth to be the most efficient way possible. Does that kind of sum up what it does? Yeah, I call it the Stratus embouchure system. Um, yeah, it helps to bring the air up. Um, all, all the aspects of your playing when people smile, the notes go thin. You can't smile with the Stratus. Once you find the sweet spot for practicing, um, i just like to put a disclaimer in because there'll be a lot of people out there that have watched my uh, videos, uh, as I know you have. Um, um, the idea is that you need these forward and the Stratus encourages that. Also, the other thing is you need the teeth gap. That's why we do the whistle. So we do the whistle, and that keeps everything open. And you can hear the sound coming through just the aperture. I see. So you're basically playing with extremes. You're playing with the extremes, and then you kind of pull it all back into where it's the most natural way, right? Yeah, and then remove the chin rest and then and float. And then it will kind of train you. Nice. Um, uh, you had on a fantastic trombone player uh, many months ago, Bill Watrous. Yeah. And I went to one of his clinics and he showed me something. And he said, this will really wind a lot of trombone players up. And uh, if my chops are good enough, I'll show it. Something like that. Yeah, it's like a circular breathing alternate position exercise. <laughs> I, I wasn't circular breathing. I'm not as clever as that's, you. That's how Phil does it. Phil Wilson will do that, and he'll yeah, circular breathe that yeah. whole thing. That's but I, I, on a good day, I can do it on the slide without any without any um, partials showing at all. Yeah, that's a cool. But exercise. I just want to I want to get away from the high notes. Uh, the, the the Stratus will help tremendously with. Um, the middle range as well. And 
and you still get that evenness. You don't go, la, da, de, da, da. it doesn't go thinner. The notes don't go thinner because as you're pulling these in, you get more tympanic. <laughs> By the way, that G feels like an E because yeah. I've been working with Stratus. It feels like a. And the proof of that is. So there's no change in pitch. E yeah. to G. I have a question. Yeah. About balancing practicing with this device versus performing with it. Do you recommend to perform with it in addition to practicing with it? Like, how do you... I do, I do, um, because of my scar tissue. It won't go away. And I think the people that book me, they are only interested in what comes out the bell, not how it happens. So you um, had an accident, though. You had an accident. You fell off the stage. What happened? Trombone went through my top lip and uh, damaged all the muscles up there. So I, I had five notes after my operation. I had microsurgery, and uh, I heard the doctor say he'll never play again. Oh, God. That's, oh that's great. Thank you. Oh, man. So, From being a professional trombone player. So then like a gift of God, basically, you dreamt this machine. Dreamt it. Yeah, that's amazing, I've, still got the bit of, I've still got the bit of paper. I'll send it to you if you want to put it in the video. That's, that's amazing, man. And then it retrained you to your embouchure to play. So you taught me. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, uh, it taught me things that I, I just I did naturally when I was a when I was a, a session player. I didn't know how I was doing it. I might have been a bit of a natural. I certainly aren't a natural now. I've had to learn again, you know, and that's why I'm probably being so useful to people getting in touch with me to say, look, I've had this, I've had these chop problems, and or I've had a, I've had a few months off, and I I, I thought my embouchure would repair and it's got worse you know so can you let me know or let us know what types of people have benefited from this device like people that have had you know, does it help with dystonia stuff like that yeah i've got some students with dystonia uh, and one of the guys in england that said that he nearly sold his instruments and he met me and i got him playing again uh, he said he's not the standard he was, but he is playing again. And um, dystonia is a oh, that's a nasty thing. That is, that's when all the muscles just collapse. Yeah. And I, I, so what I've said to my students is um, about the dystonia is you've you've damaged the road. You, you've damaged the road. We're going to have to build a new highway, and you have to go through every aspect of of the embouchure to put them straight and it takes a, it takes a lot of dedication amazing so if people were interested in getting this device the stratus how how do you have it now is it it's on your website still stratusbrass.com stratusbrass.com that's amazing yeah. yeah i mean it's helped me as far as the relieving some of the pressure it's cuz it's always just a kind of an instinct to tense up and it's helped me to not tense up when i go up in the range and it kind of like evens it out it's uh it's really cool i've actually never experienced anything quite like it before it's pretty cool no i think every I trombone think... player would love to, to try one out and just to have it it's it's just like this little thing and then you just remove the chin rest when you want to take it off i just leave it on this mouthpiece all the time and then i just have this and i put it in when i want to use it but yeah it's pretty fun it's pretty cool i'm i'm thrilled that that you're using it paul uh, with the reputation you've got, and uh, it's great to think that um, I've reached out to so many people. And yes, I can give you some names. There's uh, a French horn player in the LSO, LPO. So uh, it's for London. all brass instruments. It's all brass instruments. All brass. All brass from piccolo, instruments. From piccolo trumpet to tuba. Nice. I've got tuba players using it in the Taiwan Orchestra. I've got um, principal trumpets using it. Um, in the Taipei Orchestra, um, one of the great jazz players over in the UK is called Steve Waterman, and he uses it. Uh, the, there's more names. Uh, Jens Lindman bought one off me in Ohio at the ITG. If they want one in the next few days, I've got to put the price up. It's going to go up to 225, 235 um, with posters and packaging all over the, over the world. 
but it will be going to 225. But there's a few left that can have them at 195. I see. So, as it's a special for you. Oh, uh, it's for, special for our Bone Master clan. So, yeah. we appreciate that. So, guys, if you want one, I would get on that now before the price goes up on these things. Definitely worth it. I mean, it's a little cool thing you can have the rest of your life. I I love it. It's fun. Because it, it, it trains you in ways that you can't be trained unless you use this. Because it, it it's like an extra support system. It's almost like having like a like a, a person say, uh-uh, too much, uh-uh. And you feel it and it's telling you when it's right. It's like, nope, nope, nope. There you go. There's the sweet part. It's like Goldilocks. It's like the Goldilocks principle. It's like it, it knows when it's too much, too less, and it tells you right where you got to be, and then you play on it like that, and then you take it away, and then your body, the more you do it and practice with it, like maybe 20 minutes a day, right? Yes. Yeah, the more you practice with it, your body just starts to naturally know where that spot is, that sweet spot is. So that's pretty cool because there's I don't think there's anything like this ever made before, right? <laughs> I, I, I love the Goldilocks reference. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anything made like this. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, I appreciate you uh, sharing, you know, your, your passion of this with us. And uh, I know how much it's helped you. And, and uh, oh, it's pretty tremendous, cool, man. Tremendous. I'm, I'm playing with bands now that I thought my career was, I thought my career was over. Mm -hmm. And it's great. I, I did some solos the other night. I did the, the Tommy Dorsey Sentimental Over You. Nice. And, uh, yeah. And I just look around the band, I'm thinking, I'm playing again. And uh, some of the guys say, you keep smiling. I said, yeah, I'm playing again, you know? Yeah, that's that right. That story right there is just amazing. That what, I mean, not many people invent something that that changes their life to do something they love to do to be able to do it again. Like that story right there, you should be, someone should write about you in like the New York Times or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, over to you. Was you can say you discovered it. That's a cool story. Just the story is cool, man. So awesome. Thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Just go to stratusbrass.com, right? Get get your your own, very own, and get get it now before the price goes up because it's gonna go up. Because materials are getting more expensive, right? Uh, and the engineering costs. Yeah. It's totally worth it, though. I mean, it's like the price of one lesson, and you basically have this cool thing for the rest of your life. So, awesome, man! Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Sound great, man. Beautiful job. Thank, thank you for being much. on here. All right. Take care, Marcus. All right, thank bye. you. Thank you to all your uh, followers and yourself. And uh, thanks for taking the time. And I'd like to say I'm very proud to be now on uh, Bone Masters. Thank you. It's great to have you.